Hi, welcome to English Composition. I'm Michael Cheng. I'm with Cher Chen today. 各位同学，大家好，欢迎来到英文作文课程。我是 Cher， 在我身边的是郑老师。And today, in Unit 14, we're going to continue learning about the writing process, and we're going to concentrate on the post-writing process. In addition, we're going to learn about how to, or we're going to practice using some time expressions. 好，那这个单元里面呢，我们将要继续学习要写作的整个过程。这次呢，我们将专注在写作的后续编辑过程。除此之外呢，我们还要再练习一下怎么样去使用各种各种不同种类的时间表达语。All right, and as we mentioned in previous units, we have the pre-writing stage in which we brainstorm to come up with ideas. 好，那在前面几个单元里面呢，我们已经了解到写作的前置作业可以帮助作者想出一些好的想法。And last week we talked about the writing stage that requires you to follow the ideas of principle, of coherence, and unity. 好，那至于前一个单元呢？哦，我们则讲到了所谓写作的阶段哦。那你必须要去遵循一些所谓的法则哦，也就是你希望能够让整篇文章达成连贯性跟整体性。But then after you're done writing your essay, you're not finished yet. And so today, today we're going to talk about the important ideas of editing and revising. 哦，然而呢，当你完成你的写作之后呢，哦，把它写在文字上之后，你还不能算是真正的已经把整件事都完成喽。哦，写完之后，你还必须要再回头再去重新审视一下你的作品，哦，进行所谓的校对以及编辑。Right, so after you're done writing your first draft, you need to go back, take a look at it again from your reader's viewpoints, and make sure that it's meeting the needs. Is it answering? Or is it telling them what they need to know? In addition, when you go back and revise and edit, you should look for mistakes and fix grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes. 好，当你完成你的第一份草稿之后呢，身为一个写作者哦，你必须要退后一步，接下来呢，以一种读者的角度再去重新审视一下你的作品。哦，那除此之外呢，当你写完草稿之后呢，身为一个写作者，你要一定要再去检查一下有没有拼错字啊，或者是文法错误的地方。All right, what we're going to do now is talk about what's the difference between revising and editing. And so sometimes we can think of these as a similar process, but one, uh, one way that's maybe a little more useful is to divide them into two stages. 好，那我们接下来呢，来为各位同学来分辨一下所谓的校订跟编辑到底有什么不一样哦。校订跟编辑呢，常常被当作是两个可以互相通用的词哦。然而呢，其实呢，这两个词哦，应该被当作两个分开的过程来看。And so we can think of revising as this continual process of writing and rewriting in order to improve the meaning in our in our in our essay or in our paragraph. 好，我们首先呢，所谓校订啊，我们可以把校订的过程当做一个持续不断写作的一个过程哦，不断的去改进你已经写好的草稿里面一些不完整的意思。And then editing, we can think of as more of stylistic, looking at the style or looking at the grammar points and fixing these in order to get an acceptable draft. Oh, 那至于编辑的这个部分呢？哦，编辑我们只把它重点呢放在呃把这个草稿里面所呈现的文体或是文法哦或是呈现的这个样式哦做一番修改。Alright, so now let's go and look at revision in more depth. 好，接下来呢，我们先从这个校订开始，我们来仔细的看一下它里面的一些细节。And so revision means that you revise and you redraft in order to get your text right. 好，所谓的校订呢，哦，就是指你将文章正确的修正，哦，去改稿，哦，也就是说呢，你专注于在整体的这个理论去做修订。And so in other words, what you're doing is you're paying attention to your overall argument. Uh, you're looking at the logical flow of your ideas, for example, and you're looking at the quality of your evidence that's presented in the writing. 好，那也就是说呢，哦，你专注的不只是整体的理论，还有包括符合逻辑的想法，以及文章中所呈现的整个证据的品质。And so then, what you do is you adjust your arguments, or else you can elaborate, you can add more information, or you can cut information that's not necessary. You can add examples also, and overall, what you're trying to do is improve the quality of your writing in this first draft. 好，那也就是说呢，你可能还会需要去调整一下你在文章中提到的论点，然后呢，你再给予更精辟的阐述，或者是呢，你也可能会删除掉一些原本写的一些论点。哦，那也许你再加上一些例子，以增进整个草稿的整体品质。Right. Also, when you're revising, you try to examine your ideas with a fresh eye. 
。好，那同时呢，当你在做校定的时候，希望你呢是用一双透彻的双眼哦，重新的再来检视你的作品。And so, as this word suggests, as the meaning of the word suggests, revision is literally revision. This means to see something, which is what vision means, and to see it again, which is what the R E means. 好，那其实呢，我们刚刚说到这个，走用这个重新用一双透彻的眼睛再回去看这一件想法呢，就跟这个 revision 这个字暗示的意思是一样的哦。revision 它意思就是 re 哦，就是再一次的意思哦，再加上 vision 这个部分，也就是所谓的看哦。那整体而言 ，revision 指的就是重新再看一次。And so, when you're revising, try to look at something from a different angle or from a different perspective. And so, this way, maybe you can see some new option to write about, or maybe you can see some kind of flaw that you didn't notice in your first writing. 好，那当你在做这个步骤的时候呢，哦，你必须要以一种全新的方式再来看看你的想法。哦，那这样子的步骤呢，就可以帮助你更确切的去看透哦，你这个新的选项啊，或者是新的一些内容，或者是你隐藏起来的一些缺点。And so one Way to be able to look at your writing with a fresh perspective is to put it away for a day or two. So don't just write your first draft and then begin revising it right away. Instead, put it aside, let your brain rest, and then when you come back and look at it a few days later, you see it with new eyes. 好，那要怎么样才能够拥有这双所谓的这个全新的透彻的双眼呢？哦，那对于一个熟练的写作者来讲呢，啊，我们建议各位同学可以先把东西放在旁边休息个一两天，然后呢，我们再拿回这个作品，再仔细的看一下。Right now, let's take a look at the steps that we should follow when we are revising our paper. 好，接下来呢，我们为各位同学讲解的一下，呃，的事情呢，是关于我们要呃经过什么样的步骤才能够完成校定的过程。Right, so on your first revision, you should focus on the overall structure and clarity. 好，第一个步骤呢，指的是你应该着重在整体的结构跟整体的明确性。And so what you can do is you can read over your paper, look for ambiguous descriptions that need to be clarified, or you can fill out incomplete arguments or remove repetitive points. 你这个步骤中要做的事情呢，是再读一遍文章，看看是不是有模糊的论点，需要再更阐述的更加的清楚哦，或者是呢，你也需要补足不完整的论点哦，然后移除已经重复的观点。And for your second revision, focus on the coherence and unity of the content. 好，第二次校正呢，你应该着重在内容的连贯性跟整体性。And so you can add signal words or phrases between sentences and paragraphs, or and you can also take away irrelevant arguments and examples. 好，那这个时候呢，你应该在句子或是段落的中间加上一些指示词或者是一些片语。哦，那当然，同时你也可以去删除掉一些比较不相关的论点或是例子。And the third thing is, don't worry too much about spelling, punctuation, and similar errors right now. 好，那第三个步骤呢，要提醒各位同学哦，在这个阶段，先不要去担心拼字啊、标点符号之类的错误。And you can leave these mechanical concerns for the editing process, which you do next. 好，那这些所谓技术性上的问题哦，我们可以把它留给接下来我们要提到的编辑的过程。All right, we're going to take a little bit of a break now. When we come back, we'll talk about editing. 好，我们现在先休息一下，回来之后呢，我们继续来讨论编辑的部分。Welcome back. We're going to talk about editing now. 好，欢迎各位同学回来。我们现在呢，要为各位同学讲解的是编辑的部分。Editing means that you check your paper after you finish writing it, and when you edit your paper, you try to find mistakes and you try to think of other ways to improve your writing. 好，所谓的编辑呢，指的就是当你完成之后，哦，你要再重新检查你的文章。当你在做编辑的时候呢，你主要是要找出错误，然后思考怎么样去改进这篇文章。And one good way to edit your paper, one good way to find mistakes when you're editing, is to read your paper or read your your paragraph out loud. And when you read it out loud, you have to pay more attention to each word, and then often you can catch mistakes that you normally won't catch. 好，那我们在这里建议各位同学一个很好的办法哦，也就是呢，把你的文章大声的念出来。当你大声的念出来的时候呢，你会比较容易去找到你在文章中所犯的错误哦，因为你会很注意你每一个用字。Alright, so now let's take a look at some steps that you should follow as you're editing. 好，那接下来呢，当你在编辑文章的时候，你必须应该注意到以下的几个步骤。And your first step is to check your spelling. 
。好，那第一个步骤，请你去检查一下你的拼字。And then the second thing that you should do is check your grammar. 好，那第二个步骤呢，则是去确认一下你的文法的部分。All right, so let's talk about checking your spelling. So when you check your spelling, you need to make sure you don't spell words wrong. One thing that can help you is to use a spell checker. 好，那在这第一个步骤，所谓的检查拼字的部分呢，哦，当然你必须要确认一下你没有拼错任何一个英文字哦。那城市里面呢，通常会内建一个所谓的拼字及文法检查的功能。那这个功能呢，就可以帮助你去找到错误的拼字。And one thing that you really have to remember when you're using a spell checker is that you can't count on it all the time, because sometimes you spell a word wrong, but it's actually a correctly spelled. It's a different correctly spelled word. 好，那但是各位同学要千万记得哦，我们不能完全都靠这个拼字及文法检查的功能来帮我们找到所有的错字，因为呢，其实有时候你会发现你一个拼错的字，其实呢，以字形而言，它可能是另外一个正确的单字。All right, so let's take a look at an example here. 那我们来看看一个例子哦。So we have this sentence: He is now going to be the next president of the union. 好，我们看到这个句子，他说他现在将要成为下一个哦，我们这个组织的总裁。And you can see every word is spelled correctly there. 好，你会发现呢，这个句子里面哦，每一个字都是正确的。And now let's take a look at another sentence: He lost the election by three percent. 好，我们现在看到下面这个句子，他说，呃，他是在这个选举之中呢，输了三趴的这个票。And again, every word is spelled correctly in this sentence. 好，你会发现呢，这个句子也是一样哦，是完全正确的拼字。Now, if we take the two sentences and we put them together in a paragraph, we start to have something strange. 好，但是如果我们把这两个拼字都正确的句子放在同一个段落里面，你就会发现有一点怪怪的地方哦。All right. The first sentence says that now he's going to be the president, but the second sentence said he lost the election. So how does this make sense? 好，那你会发现说，哎，既然他已经这个呃要成为下一届的组织的这个总裁了，他怎么又会输了他的选举呢 ？And so the reason this doesn't make sense is because we have one word that's spelled wrong. 好，那为什么会有错误？其实啊，很简单，是有一个字是拼错了。And so the first sentence should actually say he is not going to be the next president of the union. 好，其实这个错字呢，就在于第一句的第三个字 not 哦，不是 now， 而是 not. And so we see here we spelled a word wrong, but no spell checker will catch this. You have the only person or the only way you can find this mistake is if you have a real human being reading this that understands the meaning. 好，你会发现呢，像这个地方，这个 not 这个字拼错了，但是这个错字刚好是一个，也不是一个错误的字哦。N O W now 也是一个正确的字，所以像这样的错误无法靠这个城市里头附的拼字及文法检查来帮你找出来。这时候呢，必须要靠人哦，仔细的去阅读、去思考，才能够抓出这样的错误。And so this example just shows you that if you're going to that that you cannot 100% depend on the spell checker. That you can use it to catch some obvious mistakes, but you still have to read your essay by yourself and find out. You have to read it. You have to understand it in order to catch mistakes like we just looked at. 好，那这也就是为什么我们会建议各位同学哦，你不能够太过于去依赖机器的功能哦。那你还是得靠你自己重新去阅读文章、去思考，才能够真正的做到哦，检查拼字的部分。All right. So the next thing that you need to do as you're editing is check your grammar. 好，接下来呢，你必须要去检查的部分是你的文法。And so, in order to check your grammar, the basic thing that you can do is not try to put too many ideas, not try to write too much in one sentence. 好，那在这个部分呢，所谓检查文法哦，你要试着不要把太多的想法合并在同一个句子里面。And so you can stick to the grammar focus. And so your each chapter has a grammar focus. Just stick to that grammar focus. Don't try to go off and write too many things on your own. 好，那这个方法呢，就是请各位同学你要专注一下，在每一个段落你要讲的东西哦。那不要试着在文章，在这个段落或是在文章之中呢，加入太多的想法。Right, and then one final point is when you're writing, don't just think of a sentence in Chinese and then just switch it word for word into English, because this will give you a really strange, weird-sounding sentence in English. 
好，那最后一点呢，要提醒各位同学的是这样子的哦。各位同学呢，经常会有一个状况是，把这个呃中文的想法哦，直直接的逐字逐句的翻译成英文哦。那千万不要这样做哦，因为这样做的话呢，你的文法看起来会非常奇怪哦。All right, and so now we've talked about uh, uh, revising your paper, editing your paper. But there's one more thing that you have to pay attention to before your paper is finished. 好，那我们现在已经跟各位同学讲完了校订以及编辑的过程，但是在你交出你最后的写作的作品之前呢，还有一件事是各位同学要注意的。And so what we need to do next is pay attention to how your how you format your paper. 好，那这件事呢，也就是你要怎么样把你的文章做一个合适的排版。And you want to be pay attention to how you format your paper because you want it to be professional looking. You want it to look really nice and clean. 好，那为什么要请各位同学要注意到排版的部分呢？哦，因为我们会希望说你写出来的文章呢，看起来要很专业，哦，那非常的整齐，非常的清洁，而不是要看起来乱糟糟的。And it's really important that you keep your paper looking nice. Uh, maybe not so much if you're in school, but it's very important once you enter the work world. For example, if you have a resume that you give to a person who is thinking of hiring you, you want your resume to look nice. You don't want it to have be full of mistakes. You don't want it to have poor format. Otherwise, the person may not be interested in hiring you. 好，那为什么我们要特别讲到说它的这个呃整个文法的呃样子哦，它的整个版面的结构呢要很清楚呢？哦，那其实各位同学可能觉得这个版面的排版呢、哦、并不是那么重要、哦，在大学里面一个不太好的排版也不会影响到各位同学在课堂上的成绩。但事实上呢，我们要提醒各位同学哦，当你出了社会之后，比如说你现在在写一封求职信，或是你在写作你的履历表。哦，如果你没有特别注意到这些所谓版面上的小细节，哦，可能你未来的老板就会觉得你这个人有一些呃不太细心啊，哦，不太注意小细节啊，那因此呢，他们会想要雇佣你的这个意愿呢就会比较减低了。And so what we're going to do now is give you some tips for page format for an essay. We're not going to talk about a resume. That's not part of this course. 好，那当然了，我们接下来刚跟我同学讲到的哦，是一个单纯的文章写作的方式哦，来做一些排版的修订哦。那当然，这个单元中我们并不会特别去提到所谓履历的写作方式，那它有各种不一样的排版。So now let's take a look at the format for the a day of mine essay. 好，我们现在呢，以我们在上一章中提到的我的一天这篇范文来做一个版面格式的一个讲解。And so this is a nice, clean-looking essay, and we're going to give you some tips for how to make. We're going to give you some guidelines for how you should write your essay. 好，那现在呢，各位同学在画面上看到的这个版面是非常清楚而且很整洁的。那我们会跟各位同学讲一下，应该要遵照什么样的准则才能够做出这样子整洁的一个版面。Right, and the first step is obviously type your paper on a computer. 好，那当然，第一个步骤呢，我们建议各位同学都用电脑打字来写你的作文。And then the, the great thing about a computer is that you can correct your mistakes very easily. 好，那为什么要建议各位同学用电脑打字哦？那当然是因为这个打字呢，可以帮助你在呃修订文章的时候非常容易、非常轻易的。All right, the second thing to pay attention to is that you should leave margins on all sides of your essay, on all sides of the page. 好，那接下来要注意到的事情呢是这样的哦，文章的这个纸一列印出来的纸张哦，它的四个边边呢都要留下一个空白的这个边框。All right, and so、uh, you should leave about one inch or about two and a half centimeters of blank space on the top, bottom, and sides of each page that you write. 好，那在这个地方呢，所谓合适的这个边框呢，大概是上下左右各至少要留大概一寸的距离哦，也就是大概二点五公分的空白。All right, so we have a lot of uh, a lot more tips, but we're going to take a break right now, and we'll come back with more about page formatting after the break. 好，我们先休息一下，待会回来我们会继续告诉各位同学其他应该要遵守的规则。All right, welcome back. We're going to continue talking about page format. 好，欢迎各位同学回来。接下来呢，我们继续为各位同学讲解这个版面设置的问题。All right, let's go on to our third guideline, which is double space your paper. 好，接下来呢，我们讲到第三个部分的准则哦，也就是呢，你该应该在将文章列印出来的时候，要设定为两倍行高的行距。All right, and let's go on to our fourth point, which is you should write your full name 
in the upper right hand corner of the first page. 好，接下来我们会建议各位同学在第一页的右上角写上你的全名。All right, and then below that, write the date that the composition is due. Not the date you write it, the date that you have to hand it in. 好，在名字的下方呢，请你写上应该缴交的日期。这个日期不是你刚把文章完成的日期哦，而是你把作业缴交出去的日期。All right, then our sixth guideline is to center a title at the beginning of your first page. 好，那接下来呢？第六点，各位同学应该遵守的是，在文章第一页的起始哦，正中央的地方写上你文章的标题。Guideline number seven is to indent at the beginning of each paragraph that you write. 啊，第七点的部分，请各位同学在每一个段落的起始处缩排去做缩呃书写。All right, and then guideline number eight is that punctuation marks should appear after a word. 好，那接下来呢？第八点，请各位同学注意到标点符号的部分应该要出现在单字的后方。Right, and so this means that you should never begin, um, you should never begin a line in your essay with a punctuation mark. 好，那这也就代表呢，在每一个段落、每一行文字的开头都不能够用标点符号来当做那一行的开头。And so normally this is not a problem if you use an English font, but if you use a Chinese font, if you use write English letters with a Chinese font, you're allowed to put punctuation marks at the beginning of a line. And so this is something that you absolutely do not do in English. 好，那通常呢，如果各位同学在打字的时候使用的是英文字的输入系统的话，那就不会有这样的问题哦。那这个问题通常是出现在当同学哦没有使用英文字的输入系统，而是使用我们中文的 typing 的输入系统的时候，哦，中文字是允许你把这个标点符号放在一行的的这个最前面的地方的哦。那这时候就会出现哦在英文中不被允许的状况了。All right. Our next guideline, number nine, is to leave one blank space after a punctuation mark. 好，那接下来还是关于标点符号的部分，请各位同学注意哦，在标点符号之后呢，请空一格。All right, look at guideline number ten, and this is only hyphenate words at the boundaries between syllables. 好，那这时候呢，我们接下来讲到第十点，讲到是在字的音节的分界处哦，才可以使用所谓的连字符号来分割单字。And also, do not hyphenate if splitting a word results in a syllable with only one letter. 好，那当然，我们在分割的时候，各位同学还是要注意到，千万不要分割之后呢，会变成让有一个音节只有一个字母哦，这是不被允许的。And the last guideline that we want to emphasize again is don't spell words incorrectly. 哦，那接下来我们要再一次强调的是，请千万不要拼错字哦。And remember, if using a spell checker, you have to remember that spell checker will not catch every misspelled word. 那当然，各位同学是可以使用所谓的拼字检查功能的，但是千万要记得哦，并不是所有的错误都可以透过这个拼字检查的功能能够自动的去达成。What we're going to do now is we're going to go look at the writing analysis activity number one that you find on page 183 of your textbook. 好，我们接下来呢要为各位同学做一个练习，请各位同学看到课本的第一百八十三页的写作练习一，我们来为各位同学做讲解。And we're going to find the formatting mistakes in this. In this activity, All right? If we look over here, we can see that the first problem is that there's no name and date. 好，我们如果呢，在这个时候，我们看看这个段落中哦，我们会发现第一个错误，很明显的就是这篇短文没有列出作者的名字，还有他的日期。All right, so this is added, and we're going to add the name, their share's name, and the date that the essay, and we're having today's date. 好，我们呢，呃，当然这个部分呢，我们要把它做一个修改，所以你会看到说我的名字出现啦，哦，然后还有呢，我们这篇文章缴交的日期，也就是十二月三号。All、right, another thing that we see is the title is not centered. 好，接下来我们会看到另外一个错误是，哎，这个文章的呃标题并没有放到这一行的正中间哦。All、right, so let's move that title into the middle. 好，所以呢，这时候我们接下来就把这个呃文章的标题至中作为排列。All right. Now the next thing we need to do is add margins to each side of this essay. 好，那接下来我们还要做的事情呢，是在页面的四个边保留它的边缘空间。All right. And so here we can see now we've added s. Now we've added the margins. 好，现在呢，画面上呢就是一个正确的使用方式哦，四个边都留下了所谓的边框。Now if we look very carefully at the text, we can see that there's a problem, another problem, which is there are no spaces after the punctuation marks. 好，那接下来呢？如果我们仔细的看一下文章的内容，我们会发现，在每个标点符号的后方都没有留下一个空格作为区隔。哎 
All right, so now let's add in the blank spaces after these punctuation marks. 好，所以现在呢，我们做一个修正，在每个标点符号的后方加上一个空格。All right, and so now over here we can still see that there are there's another problem, which is there are punctuation marks at the beginning of a line. 好，那在我们完成修订之后，我们会发现还有问题哦。你会发现呢，哦，有些标点符号出现在每一行的开头了。And so let's take these punctuation marks and move them at the end of the word in the previous line. 好，那我们现在要做的呢，当然就是把这些标点符号移回去到前一个字的这个后方哦。那也就是让它出现在一行的最后面哦，也不能在一行的句首。All right, and then our sixth problem is deals with splitting words at the wrong place, and so you can only split a word at the syllable boundary. 好，那第六个问题呢是断字哦，它是断在错误的位置。要记得断字的地方呢，只可以是这个字的音节的分界处。And we can see that three words were split in this essay. 哦，我们可以看到有三个字哦，在这篇文章中被分开了。And these words are holiday, sing, and day. 好，那这三个字分别是 holiday。Sing, 还有 day, and so holiday has three syllables, and you can see on the screen how the word holiday is broken up into its three syllables. 好，现在在这个屏幕上呢，各位同学也可以看到 holiday 啊，其实可以分成三个音节。And so we can split this word before the d and day, but we cannot split this word between the d and the a. 好，我们可以把这个字呢，如果要做一个分隔的话，我们可以在 i 跟 d 中间把它分隔开，但是我们绝对不能把这个分隔的这个呃分号哦放在 d 跟 a 中间。And then with the word sing and day, these are one syllable words, so we cannot split them at all. 好，那接下来像 sing 或是 day 这两个单字呢，因为它们是单音节的单字，所以呢，我们并不能把它做一个分割的动作。And so just in general, it's better to try to avoid splitting words if possible. 好，但是呢，哦，以整体而言，我们会建议各位同学，如果非必要的话，请尽量不要去分隔你的每一个字哦，让它维持一个完整的样态样式。All right, so now we've almost finished cleaning up our essay. There's just two more things we need to do. We can indent the first line of the paragraph, and let's also double space. 好，那我们已经快要完成整篇文章的这个。呃，表版面设置的地方了，但是还剩下两件事。第一个呢，我们要在第一行这个段落的开头哦，把它做一个缩排的处理啊、哦。当然，另外呢，哦，我们则是在每一个呃每一行跟每一行中间设定为两倍的行距。All right, so now let's take a look at our complete essay. 好，那接下来我们来看一看这一篇已经完成的呃修订的这篇文章。And just look at how much nicer this looks. It's like easier to read. If I'm looking at this, I find this much easier to read. It just looks nicer and more professional. 好，那现在我们看到这个成品之后，各位同学就可以了解到为什么我们觉得版面一定要做这样的设置哦。这样子的版面呢，看起来比较清楚哦，那对读者而言读起来也比较舒适哦。那以郑老师一个专业的这个角度而言呢，哦，那一定是像这样子的文章是能够比较去呈现出这写作者的专业性的。All right, and so we don't have time to go over the grammar exercises on TV today. But what you should do is go back and review the material and take a look at all the grammar. What we talk about the grammar, we should go look at that and then do those grammar exercises on your own. 好，那因为时间有限的关系，我们在这里无法为各位同学继续的讲解文法的部分哦。那但是请各位同学回去之后呢，务必自己呢再好好的去复习一下这篇的呃这篇文章的内容，然后呢把这个文法练习的部分呢一起完成。And then also on your own, go and do the writing analysis exercise, and then do the writing activity. 那当然，各位同学也千万不要忘记把这个写作分析以及写作实习的部分哦一并的完成。All right, so now thanks for joining us this week for English composition, and we'll be back with you next week. 好，谢谢各位同学这个礼拜的参与，我们下个礼拜再见。